If you want to get started scanning your own film, there's a few things you're going to have to know first. But don't worry, I've got you covered. First, we need to talk hardware. Personally, I'd recommend getting started with an Epson V600 since it offers decent scan quality and infrared dust removal for a very reasonable price. Alternatively, if you have the funds, then the V700 or V800 are both an awesome step up, with the V850 Pro being the top flatbed scanner model that you can get. The main benefit of these flatbed scanners is not only their availability, but also their simplicity and their ability to scan both 35mm and medium format films all in one scanner. Another option, if you're more technically inclined and have the cash, would be a Nikon CoolScan. I'd recommend a CoolScan 4, 5, or 5000. All three of these models have USB, rather than Firewire, making them a lot easier to plug into a modern computer. The reason that I'm recommending these to more technically minded people is because at this point they're very old and fragile. These scanners frequently arrive broken from sellers on eBay upon being shipped, and they also require that you open them up frequently to clean the internal mirrors to make sure that you get sharp scanning results out of them. When buying one, you also have to make sure that it comes with the proper attachments. A lot of cool scans on eBay will only come with the M8 20 slide adapter, and that's assuming that they even come with one at all. But if you're wanting to scan film negatives, then you're also going to need the FH3 film carrier as well. This holds the film flat, and then you insert it into the MA-20 slide adapter, like so. If you're lucky, then your scanner will also come with an SA-21 film adapter. It allows for a much more seamless process when scanning negatives, and I made a video covering how you can modify it to accept an entire roll of negatives for completely automated scanning. So, if you can find a reasonably priced CoolScan with the appropriate adapters that you need, I'd say this is definitely the way to go, just keep in mind that the aforementioned models can only scan 35mm film. If you need to scan 35mm and medium format, you'll have to go with a flatbed scanner or a CoolScan 8000 or 9000, which are much more expensive. Next up is software. Epson scanners come with a free software called Epson Scan which, while it doesn't deliver the best results, it's free and it's very easy to use. But if you buy an Epson scanner brand new, it will come with a license for a software called Silverfast. It's much more powerful, delivers better results, but it does have a little bit of a learning curve. Nikon scanners come with a program called Nikon Scan. It's quite old at this point and hasn't been updated in a long time, however with a bit of tinkering it can deliver exceptional results as well. The final, and what I think is the best option, is called ViewScan. It has both a one-time purchase and subscription options, and it will work with any scanner that you connect to it. Lastly, there's Negative Lab Pro, which is a single purchase plugin for Adobe Lightroom. It does require that you have an active Adobe subscription, but personally I think the results are worth it. You'll only need it if you're planning on handling your own negative inversion, which is outside of the scope of this video, but it's definitely something that I'm going to be covering in an upcoming video where I show my new scanning techniques and settings, which have dramatically improved my scan results. If that sounds like a video that interests you, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss it. I'm so close to hitting a thousand subscribers and I'm very excited. With all that out of the way, I'd like to now show you the best scanning workflow for beginners. First I'll be covering how to use an Epson flatbed scanner, then I'll show you how to use a Nikon CoolScan. For the demo today, we'll be using some Kodak Ektar 100 that I shot in Japan. First step, we have to load the negative into the film carrier. Take the negative and place it face up into the carrier being mindful not to put any fingerprints or dust or anything onto the negative itself. Once loaded, you can take and replace the retainer and just snaps into place. Make sure that your negatives are centered. Next step is to take a clean microfiber cloth and make sure that there's no dust or fingerprints on the scanner glass. Then take the film carrier and line it up properly on the scanner bed. Then close the top. All right, here we are in Epson scan. We're gonna change it from full auto mode to professional mode. We're going to change document type to film and make sure that color negative film is selected, unless you're doing color positive film, like slide film. Select 48 bit color and 3200 DPI. This is the maximum practical resolution that my V600 can handle, but a V800 or a V850 Pro can go slightly higher. We can leave unsharp mask selected and we'll turn on digital ice technology. What this does is it allows the scanner to use its infrared channel to do dust and scratch removal. Now we'll go ahead and click preview. The one other thing about these film scanners is they're quite slow, so patience is a virtue. Alright, and it looks like it found the frames all properly. The strip that I put in had four images. One thing that I'm noticing is I actually got my wires crossed a little bit. I loaded the film face up. You actually need to load it face down because that's where the imaging sensor is. So all my images are actually reversed, but that's easy to fix by just clicking this button right here. Select the other three. Oh. 
and invert those as well. This one right here, I actually shot portrait so I can rotate it by just clicking that. Now, before we click scan, we're gonna make sure that our file type is what we want it to be. Personally, I always save my scans as TIFF files so I can import them later into Lightroom and edit them. If you're just gonna leave the scans how they are, go ahead and save them as JPEG. I also make sure to uncheck all these boxes just so I don't get any extra pop-ups or anything. Click OK. Then just make sure you have all four images selected by holding down Control. And just make sure you turn on Digital Ice technology since it only turned it on for the first frame previously. Now we can click scan and we just wait now. All right, after about 15 minutes, we're finally done and looking at the results, they came out pretty nicely. So now I'll head over to view scan and I'll show you how to do that. All right, here we are in view scan. We're just gonna change a few settings to get started here. First, we'll change from basic to professional. We're gonna change the mode from flatbed to transparency. Media will be changed from auto to color negative. The preview area will be left on auto. Bits per pixel will be set to 48-bit RGB. Preview resolution will be set to 400 DPI and the scan resolution will be set to 3200 DPI. Then we'll come up to filter and we'll do infrared clean light. Color balance will set to auto levels. We'll come down to our negative vendor and we'll set it to Kodak. Negative brand will be Ektar and I'll set it to 100 Gen 2. I don't know what generation of Ektar I'm using. It's just some stuff that I bought recently, so I would assume it would be a later gen, but we'll just put it on gen two. And then for the output, you can leave it on JPEG if you intend to just use the files straight out of the scanning software, but I'm gonna set mine to TIFF. And I'll do TIFF file type 48-bit RGB, and that's it, click preview. All right, looks like it grabbed all of our frames properly, so now we're gonna go ahead and click scan. All right, and here are the results. So these actually do require a little bit of cropping here, but I believe that the Epson software overcrops a bit, so this probably gives you a bit more image to work with. Also, you'll notice that these are flipped wrong because I inserted the film facing up rather than facing down towards the sensor, so I'd have to fix this in Lightroom. But overall, the scan quality looks good and the colors are nice and vibrant. These would clean up very nicely in Lightroom. So I'm very happy with these. Also, if you're interested to try editing or comparing the files yourself, I will be posting these raw files available for download for channel members. All right, let's move on to the cool scan. This is a cool scan 4. View scan does come with drivers for the cool scan 4. In order to get them working, all you have to do is do Windows key X and then press the letter M to open up device manager. Come into your imaging devices. If your Nikon LS40 is listed here without any yellow triangle, you're good to go. If it does have a yellow triangle, right click on it, hit update driver, go to browse, click on let me pick, and then this driver right here, click next, and it'll install the driver and it'll work. As you can see, I'm running Windows 11 and it installed no problem. Now if we launch ViewScan, so right up here, we're gonna change it from my Office Jet Pro 8710, change it to the LS40. We're gonna take the MA-20 slide adapter, open up the front here and put it in. All right, we'll open up the FH3 film carrier and we'll put in our negative here. This one should go facing upwards. And just line it up with the frame slots here and snap it shut. All right, and we'll slide it over so that the first frame is in place right there. And go ahead and insert it. All right, our media needs to be color negative. Obviously we want 48-bit RGB. The reason we're not going 64-bit RGBI is because we don't need the infrared channel saved to the file. We're gonna allow it to just do the infrared cleaning in software. Preview resolution can just be 483 DPI. Scan resolution should be the full 2900 DPI. Then come into crop, do crop size maximum. Filter will leave infrared cleaning at light. Color balance will be set to auto levels. Make sure that your film type is set up properly. Then output, once again, I'm going to change mine to a TIFF file, 48-bit RGB, and it can just save in my pictures folder. Once everything looks good, go ahead and click scan. All right, now that our first photo is done, we'll eject this. And we'll go ahead and advance it one frame. Then reinsert it. And we'll go ahead and click the scan button again. All right, and looking at the results, I'm satisfied with these. Let's run a quick comparison between these and the Epson scanner. All right, both of these were done in view scan to keep things fair. The Epson ones are going to be mirrored just because I put the film in upside down and I don't have any way of fixing them unless I import them into Lightroom. All right, zooming in, we can definitely see this is where the camera was focused. So if we zoom in here as well. Now 
As expected, the cool scan definitely pulls way more detail from the image. The colors are slightly more pleasant on the cool scan as well, but those can be fixed in Lightroom. The reason that the cool scan is sharper, even though it scans at a slightly lower resolution, is because the cool scan actually has an autofocus capability built in. All right, and on the next photo, we can see obviously more detail in the cool scan again. And overall, the colors are nice in both photos, but there's definitely more definition in the cool scan one, just because I believe the black levels are pulled down a bit. Pretty certain this isn't really a scanner thing. This is probably more to do with view scan and how it did the auto leveling on both of these photos. All right, and moving on to photo three here, we can see that there's definitely more detail in the cool scan image right here. There is some noise in the shadow here, but that can be fixed if you run more passes here in view scan. It will take more time though. And then overall, the colors, that comes down to personal preference. And again, they could be adjusted later in Lightroom. And in the last photo here on the cool scan, you can definitely see that looks like an instant camera here. It's just a little bit of a blurry mess and same deal with the digital noise again. So that's it. That's a quick and simple tutorial on how to get started with your film scanning. If you'd like to try editing these raw files or reviewing them for yourself, as I mentioned before, they will be available for download for channel members. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, please go ahead and subscribe, like the video and ring the bell icon. If you have any tips for people who might be new to scanning their film, go ahead and leave those tips in the comments below, or if I used the wrong setting or something, please let me know. I do read all of the comments, and I will see you in the next video.